Yeah, good morning YouTube. So this is the AC end of the trip light inverter charger that I have. And you can see here, these are the two AC power lines. So this is the input power. So this is what you would plug into the wall. And then the other side is the output power. And if you look here, there's two circuit breakers. One up here is for the load. And then this breaker here is labeled charger and that's for the battery charger in this device. This switch here I added so that wasn't there originally. If we wind the clock back to about 2012 that's when I was initially looking for an inverter for my solar power system and I had looked at these trip light models and I think these are their older models so this is their power verter line. It's uh, their power inverter charger, or they call them power verters. And they all are pretty similar. They have the fan on the end. Here's your DC power. Here's your AC power. They've got all their ports and controls and switches all on one end. And so they have these set up, as it says, for RVs, cars, work trucks, boats. They even have medical rated ones. So they have a huge line of these. I think this might have been the one I was looking at, a 1250 watt. Now these style here are typically modified sine wave. And you can see on this flip page there's a lot more. There's a 2000, uh, they have a 2000 watt sine wave, there's 2400, 3600, 700, 750, 2000. So they have lots of different options, 12, 24, 36, 48 volts. So I was looking at, at something in this style, but then I decided that I should really go with the sine wave instead of the modified sine wave. So that's when I switch back to that one there, which is that unit. When I was originally looking at the modified sine wave versions, I printed out some of the manuals, and these have a lot of functions. You set them up so that you turn the AC output function off and just use this as a battery charger. You can turn the the DC portion off so you're not using any battery power at all. They have settings for different kinds of batteries. There's your, your low voltage settings. Uh, you can turn the charger on and off, inhibit charging or enable charging. You have your current settings for the, for the battery charger there. They don't have explicit current settings, but they have limited charging, no limit. So they have those sorts of features. And then I remember when I looked at the sine wave ones, I just gave a quick glance through the manual. And, you know, they had some similar features here. They, you know, instead of four low voltage transfer points, they had two. And then here's your battery type, AGM or flooded lead acid. And then on this page, they had your battery charging currents. They had like explicit current settings. And so I thought, oh, that's, that's pretty nice. So I figured this thing had all the same features as the other thing. Probably six months after I bought it, I started looking at this. Here's the 1,000 watt. 40, 32, 24, 20, 16, 12, 8, 4, but there's no zero. You can never turn this charger off. I wanted this charger primarily as a backup power, so if, if my battery voltage got too low and, and it was going to be cloudy for a few days, I, I wanted to be able to flip this charger on and recharge the battery bank. So anyway, I did some testing with this and when I was on the 12 volt lead acid battery, even if the battery bank was on float charge through the solar charge controller, if I plugged in this cable, this thing would use about 40 watts of power just trying to also maintain the float voltage on the battery bank. So that was the minimum power you had this thing plugged in, it was drawing 40 watts even during the middle of the day when the solar panels were charging the batteries. And if it was plugged in at night, it was charging the batteries fully. 
I didn't want that as a as a normal function. When I first noticed that, I contacted Triplite technical support and I asked them, "Is there any way you can turn the charger in this thing off?" And they told me, "Nope, you cannot turn it off. You can go down to four amps, and that's the, the lower limit." And the the crazy thing is those three dip switches feed into the microcontroller. So all of these settings are software settings. Why have a 4 amp charging rate? It says your charging rate is 0.3 times the amp hour rating. So you're charging at roughly one third of the amp hour rating. Who's going to have a 12 amp hour battery on a thousand watt inverter? <laughs> really crazy you know why not have a zero amp setting you know turn the charger off it's all software but anyway they assured me that you could not turn off the charger so I was looking at this and it's like well there's a circuit breaker and it says charger what happens if that circuit breaker pops so what I did was I wired in an on off switch in series with this circuit breaker and let me show you what happens here yeah, so there's my kilowatt meter. So I've got that plugged into the wall, and I've got the plug from the inverter charger here. I'm going to plug that in, and you can see it goes up to about 16 watts. So one side effect of connecting this to my 16-volt lithium battery bank is it only takes 16 watts of power to keep the charger circuit alive. It's mostly shut off right now because we're at 15.8 volts on the uh, battery bank. but still so powering the charger, but it's really not doing any charging. It's still taking some power. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this switch, which will simulate popping that circuit breaker. And if we go over here, Let's zoom in on the meter there. Now I'm going to click the switch and look at that. That power drops to zero. I'll click the switch again and it jumps right back up to 16. So that's just clicking this switch. There's zero watts and there's 16 watts. What it seems like is that this breaker is in the circuit after the transfer switch. So if I monitor the output voltage now, it still stays at 120 volts. I'm putting in 120, I'm taking out 120, but if I pop the circuit breaker, I still get 120 coming out, but I'm not putting anything into the battery. So right now I'm just running AC only, but let me go up here and I'll try to turn on the inverter. So I can turn it on and everything's fine, but see it's still running on the AC power. But if there were now a power failure, I'm going to unplug the inverter from the wall. And it doesn't like that. So what I have to do is close the breaker and then reset it. And now it's running because it, it won't go into UPS mode if that breaker is open. It's in the line between the, the incoming power and the transformer, but that's the same circuit that gets used when you're taking battery power from over there and inverting it into AC power. This works, but it's not automatic. So, what I did was I picked up a relay here. This is a double pole double throw relay. It's got your coil here. This is the common or center terminal and then you've got your normally closed and normally open contacts over here. Same thing on the other side. So these two connectors here I'm going to run hot and neutral in here from my incoming power. That's going to go right to the coil here which will turn this relay on as soon as it's plugged into power. This is my hot coming in. So I'll hook up the hot here. We'll go to the normally open contact. And then out of the center will come this other hot wire. So this will go into the unit to power it. 
And then over here, out of a normally closed contact, this will go in place of this switch. So the idea is, if this relay is off, this switch is closed, like it is now, and this thing is running off of battery power. If this thing is plugged in, power goes in here, and this thing opens up. So it's just like me manually plugging power in and then opening this switch, except it's all done automatically. So I'm hoping this relay will do the trick here. So let me shut this down and we'll hook up these wires and then come back and see if that works. Okay, I got my relay temporarily wired in here, so basically whenever I plug this cable in here, that'll turn the relay on. So let's see what happens here. I've got my power plug, and I'm going to plug it in. And you heard the relay click. And now I'm going to unplug my power here. So I'm going to pull the plug out. And it works. So everything works fine if this inverter is off. So I don't have the power on, so what I'm going to do here is go up and turn the DC power on. So now we're running here. And if you hear that clicking sound, I have this on load hunting mode. The idea is this inverter is looking for a load before it actually turns on fully. Now I'm going to plug it back into the wall, so it's on DC power now. And... In five seconds, it switches over, so it has a, a five-second delay before it transfers power. And I'm going to pull the power plug, and there it switched over. So that basically simulated a power failure, and everything's fine here. But I'm basically, again, running under no load, so I'm going to turn on my light bulb over here. And now you don't hear the clicking anymore because it's detected enough load that it's turned on. So I'm going to plug my power in again. So that's like, this is like a power outage. And now the power comes back on. And it doesn't like that. I have to reset it. So that particular one under load and going back to grid power doesn't work. I can go the other way, so I've got the grid power in, and I can pull the plug, and it switches back to battery power, so that works. So we almost have this working. The issue that we're running into, though, which I kind of expected, is that this relay is what's called a form C contact. So the way that works, you have your two contacts, and then you've got the movable wiper in between. And so there's a normally closed contact, and then you energize the relay, and then it hits the normally open contact. With a form C contact, there's a momentary gap where both contacts are open. And what's happening is, I apply power here, turns the relay on, the normally closed contact is bridging this charger circuit, but that contact opens before the power is applied. So there's a, like, probably a millisecond where this switch opens up before there's AC power available. Now going the other way from, from AC power to DC power, that works okay because then the, the AC power drops out and it goes back to DC power. So there's enough time delay there. And when there's no load, there's probably enough capacitance and inductance in the system to you know, bridge it over that slight time delay between opening and closing the contacts. Let's see, the Form C relay is what they call break before make. So the idea is it breaks the closed contact before it makes the open contact. There's a Form D relay which works a little bit different 
in that it switches like this. It's got the normally closed contact and then for a brief instant both contacts are closed and then it opens so it kind of switches like that and ideally I would love to use a Form D relay the problem is they're very hard to find you can find them in little PC board dip packages because I think they use them a lot in signal switching but I need like a 15 amp power relay so I found one on eBay. It's like some vintage, you know, aircraft equipment or something. It's it's like a 48 volt DC relay and it's like well over a hundred dollars. So I don't think I want to go with that and you know I don't need 48 volt DC. I need 120 volt AC. But anyway that was a good experiment and I think it tells me what I need to know because I'm going to do something like one of these. This is a little dual relay module for an Arduino. And initially I was going to use one of these to trigger the power switch that's up on top of the case there to be able to turn this thing on and off. But now, actually, I don't need to do that anymore because... I don't need to turn this thing on and off, at least as far as DC power. I can leave the DC power on, and then just like I have now, I have the AC power off. If I turn the AC power on to this device, the DC side shuts off. So instead of turning the DC power on and off, I'm going to use these two relays. One relay is going to do this switch. I'm going to use the second relay here to turn this relay on and off to deliver power to the unit. And that way I can just turn the AC power to this thing on and off. So then I can turn the charging circuit on and off independently. And I can do whatever switching I want. I can turn the power on and then I can turn the charging off and have a specific time delay there and I'm not relying on mechanical contacts to do that because they don't quite work. So this was a good test. It, it told me what I wanted to know and I think I'm going to keep this relay and just use it to switch power on and off and then I will tack these guys onto my little circuit board up on top there and that will be my switching system. A few little tweaks here and there. We'll get a couple of relays. I'll probably go to a four relay module but I got the two relay to start playing with this. Yes, if you have any questions, I'll post up in the comments section down below and I'll keep you updated. I'll post any follow-up videos over here on the left side. And as always, thanks for watching.